Welcome to Intro Psychology Unit 11. In this unit, we're going to be talking all things personality. And we'll be going back from very early theories of personality to more modern theories of personality. And we'll be covering things that are both theoretically interesting and things that are scientifically supported. So we're going to jump way back to the theory of personality as proposed by Sigmund Freud. So by now you're probably familiar with the name Sigmund Freud. Uh, we covered him in Psych 200 Unit 5 about his areas of consciousness, that is our consciousness, our pre-consciousness, and our unconsciousness. We also talked about his developmental theory of psychosexual development in Unit 9 on developmental psychology. So Freud is pervasive through the study of psychology, but in this unit we're going to talk about three new theories of Freud's, the theories of psychic energy, of the parts of the mind, and of defense mechanisms. So according to Freud, we all have a certain level of psychic energy. Now, psychic energy does not mean fortune telling. It has to do with our psychological energy or the energy in our mind. And he believed that the amount that we had was finite. We couldn't create or destroy it, but we had to use it up somehow. And he believed that our psychic energy was really dominated towards two major drives. There was the drive of Eros and the drive of Thanatos. Now in unit 10, we talked a lot about theory of drive and motivation. And so this works in nicely here where Freud believed we were driven towards two great motivations, the drive to dominate over others and win over others and the drive to create. And so Eros was the first drive. It's also known as libido. And this is the amount of energy we have towards the creation of something. Now libido, you might be familiar with that being used in terms of sexual libido. And Freud believed that was true. Eros could be used towards sexual pursuits, but could be also used towards lots of non-sexual things. Eros was about creativity and creating something. So if you're painting a picture or you're making a beautiful meal or you're making love, those were all uses of Eros or libido. He wrote about Eros and libido when he was a young man, perhaps when he felt he had more of it. In comparison, Thanatos was this drive towards destruction. He believed all humans had an internal drive towards destruction. And this is when we're conquering over somebody. This is when we're being aggressive and we're destroying the environment or we're destroying other people. This could be when you're cooking, but you're not so creating a beautiful meal, but more so you're butchering an animal. And he believed that anytime you are inserting your power over something that was Thanatos. Now, interestingly, if you are aware of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, it's very familiar to Thanos, who was this creature of death. And so Freud was really writing about Thanatos and psychic energy later on in his life, particularly during the Holocaust, when he was convinced that all humans had this drive of evil within them. So he believed there was always this sort of balancing point. We had these energies towards libido. We had this energy towards Thanatos, but we couldn't always use them in a socially appropriate way. We had to find more acceptable ways to expel this energy. You couldn't go around having sex with everything you desired. So sometimes you had to bake a cake or write music or do something else to expel that arrow's energy. And because murder is not acceptable, sometimes things like professional sports would come into play. So we didn't have to constantly go to war to expel our Thanatos energy. So he believed that we were constantly trying to find ways to cope with how to use up our arrows and our Thanatos. Now, in terms of our arrows and our Thanatos, he also believed we had three parts of the mind that would argue about when and how to use these. And so Freud believed we had constantly speaking three parts of the mind, the id, the ego, and the superego. And these are very different from his three tiers of consciousness. So you might be familiar with his conscious, pre-conscious, and unconsciousness. That's a separate Freudian theory. For the parts of the mind, we're really talking about these different desires. And so when we're talking about the id, we're really talking about the hedonistic desires. The id, Freud considered to be the most animalistic part of the mind. It was primitive. It's the impulsive part of the mind. It's going to go after the arrows and after the Thanatos desires, regardless of social convention. So if we constantly followed our ids, we would do the most pleasurable short-term things, but not think long-term and not think about what helps us to fit within society. If you think more about Lawrence Kohlberg's theory of morality that we covered in unit nine, this is really the pre-conventional tiers of morality. It's going after rewards and avoiding punishments in the short-term, but not considering the long-term. 
So according to Freud, ids are things like using lots of substances, spending your money, going after lots of short-term sexual pleasures, staying in bed and playing video games rather than going to your job. It's the stuff that's going to make you happy right now, but it's going to destroy you and make you feel really gross in the long term. So it's important to understand we all have ids. We all have desires just to slack off and not do the things we need to do, but that is balanced out by our superego. So our superego is the other extreme part of the mind. And rather than being impulsive, the superego is really about being extremely moral and actually being pretty perfect. If we think about the id part of our mind as being animalistic, we can think about the superego part of our mind as being angelic. We try to be so perfect, it's not humanly possible. So the superego is the idea that we don't gossip, we don't hurt others, we don't do anything that is considered impolite ever. We're totally perfect people. We follow all the rules of our religion, all the rules of our society, all the perfect hygiene rules. We're perfect in terms of our manners and our etiquette. But of course, we're humans. Humans are not perfect. If we listen to our superego all the time, we would feel really burnt out, really anxious and really depleted about ourselves because the superego establishes extremely high expectations that no one can obtain. And so what's happening here is if we listen to our superego, we're actually denying our biological nature. If we listen to our id, we're caving into the short term too much. But if we listen to our superego, we're not allowing ourselves to give our needs and our short term needs. We're thinking too much about the long term and too much about ideals that are not obtainable. Thankfully, the impulses of the id and the morals of the superego are balanced out by a third part of our mind known as the ego. Now, commonly in everyday language, you tended to use the ego to mean self-centeredness or pig-headedness. That's not what Freud was referring to when he talked about the ego. He believed the ego was the self and that we are stuck in the middle of these two angelic and devilish impulses and we had to find the balance. And so we see this trope used in lots of pop culture where there's a devil and an angel on our shoulders whispering in our ear what we should do. And so the ego is about that reality bouncing point. It's about saying, hmm, would really like to stay in bed, but I have a family that I need to feed. And it's telling the superego, look, I get that I should be perfect, but I'm not. I have to do the pragmatics. I can't be a perfect employee because I have all these other commitments. I would like to give all this stuff to the environment and, and work as a volunteer and do all this charity work, but I'm stuck in my everyday confines. I have other obligations. So the ego is about being rational, not being ideological and not being impulsive and just trying to find that balancing point. For I believe that every day and almost every instant, our ego is struggling to find that center point. And sometimes we go into our id too much, sometimes we go into our super ego too much, but listening to our ego in the middle is what would lead us to be happier and more adaptive overall.